Welcome to day two of making the orange oil, aromatic oil. I have the second batch in my boiling flask. I managed to remove most of the charcoal from the bottom of the flask. I just let uh, my flask sit overnight with a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and vinegar in it. And I don't know if those chemicals made any difference or whether it was just the liquid sitting in in the flask that softened the, the charcoal on the bottom but basically I used a long long skewer like this to kind of hit the edge of the charcoal like so on on the wall and that little by little that pushed the charcoal off of the glass and I was able to remove it and as you can see this the skewer got bent as I was hitting the the wall and so sometimes I would slide it in like this sometimes the other way around depending on which spot I was trying to hit and so with some some effort uh, I was able to get most of that charcoal off um, I'm not sure if I uh, mentioned in the previous video that I've switched to a separatory funnel for my collection vessel so that will make it easier to tell how much oil I have versus the liquid in there. So I'm going to fire up this second batch and this time I'll go a little bit slower heating it up and we'll see how much oil I'll collect this time. So my water pump is running. Um, I have the heat on my um, distillation flask. So that's warming up and also this time I added some more water to the second batch so I have about the same level as I had in the end um, I ended up with in, in the original batch first I started with a lower level and then I added some water when I noticed that I had too much solids in there so this time I just went for a larger amount of water and I, I think I could add a little bit more maybe ideally you want to be at the middle of the flask uh, in case of boil overs, but uh, I'll take my chance and uh, yesterday the process went fairly smooth I didn't really have much problem with foaming or anything So I think it's okay to have a little bit higher level of liquid. So I'll, wor I'll just work with this For a while I saw uh, bubbling going on on the bottom of my flask But the bubbles would just rise up a little bit and then disappear I'm guessing the vapor that created the bubbles would cool down and liquefy and then come back down to the bottom. But now slowly I see some bubbles beginning to escape to the top and there's some motion in the flask. Some liquid is flowing up and down as it heats and cools down. So the boiling is slowly starting to begin and my flask, my thermometer has reached 45 degrees Celsius now. Uh, it started at 25. So I have a 20 degrees uh, increase in temperature, a slight increase in volume, and I think that the, the boiling, the actual boiling process will begin soon, and hopefully soon I should start to see some vapor forming in the neck and in the condenser few more minutes and the temperature has is reaching 80 degrees now and I see first droplets forming in the neck and dripping back down and also I think I see some vapor already beginning to form and I've reduced the heat a little bit because the liquid started boiling fairly vigorously so I dropped the heat a little bit to slow that down to not overboil um, it's it's backing down now so that looks good and soon I should be getting my first few drops of the condensed oils so I'm almost at 80 degrees and somewhere between 80 and 100 is when I had my process uh, distill yesterday so a few more degrees and I should be seeing first drops now I'm at around 98 degrees in the neck as indicated by the thermometer and I see first droplet dripping down. So yeah, apparently this particular oil 
condenses or evaporates very close to the water's boiling temperature. So unlike the grapefruit oil, which evaporate at around 80 something degrees, this one actually needs to be close to 100 degrees. But now I'm, I'm collecting my first droplets and let's see how much oil I'll get this time. And the foaming action here in the boiling flask is getting really close to the neck so I have to keep a good eye on, on this so it doesn't spill over into my condenser. Uh, if anything I'll just lower my heater uh, immediately and uh, remove the heating. So within the first few minutes, here's what's collected in my separatory funnel. Um, you can clearly see two layers. Most of it on the bottom is water. And the top is what I'm looking for. Not a whole lot of it. I was hoping for a little bit more. But I'll give it some more time and see if more collects. So it's been about an hour since I started this process and this is the amount of liquid that I've collected so far. Um, you can clearly see the top layer of oils and as the diameter of this funnel increases, if the amount of oil uh, was constant, then you would expect that the thickness of this layer would be uh, lessening. But it seems like this layer is staying at about the same thickness, maybe reducing a little bit, but not by much, which tells me that there's probably still some oil being collected from, from the process. So I'll let this uh, go for a little bit longer and then uh, collect the results. One other thing that I've noticed is that you can see these little bubbles here on the walls and also these droplets above the, the liquid. And no matter what I do, some of these bubbles or droplets will not incorporate neither into the water phase or the oil phase. Which makes me think that uh, this may be um, an oil that has an even lower uh, boiling temperature or um, solidifying temperature and it doesn't mix with the with the liquid oil on top of the water and actually uh, I've observed the same thing on on my other vessels this flask that I used to collect um, the initial dis distillation also has these droplets and as I moved the liquid around in that flask those droplets wouldn't incorporate into the the main body of the liquid so I think I will heat up this collected water phase, heat up in, in the uh, collection flask, in that round flask, which hopefully that will allow those droplets to become more fluid and come off of the walls and, and collect into one uh, common phase and then I'll be able to combine that with the rest of my distillate. So it's been about an hour and a half now since I started the process and I've collected some more liquid um, and at this point it's probably mostly water I don't really think I'm collecting much if any of the oils and I'll try to move my collection vessel spin it around so that I can show you these bubbles that I've noticed here's one this is a big one so this was just a splash on the wall and as the liquid went past it, the, the top of the liquid went past it, this thing didn't incorporate it into the upper oil layer or into the lower water level. So that's what I was talking about earlier, that these droplets may be some other oil that is denser, thicker than the other two phases and, and don't incorporate into neither one of those. 
So I'll try to collect that as well and see if I can remove that off, off of those walls by using a heated uh, water phase to flush those out. And so like I said, it's, it's about an hour and a half now and I think I've collected enough uh, liquid. So I've turned off the heat and I'll let the whole thing cool down slowly by itself and once the um, boiling flask stops boiling and cools down I will open up the whole assembly and um, flush out whatever liquid is collected in, in the uh, condenser because there's still some liquid in there and then I'll start separating my oil. So I started draining my water phase out of the separator funnel and I think this will be a good opportunity to show you what I was talking about as far as these bubbles just staying on the surface. I'm just trying to catch the focus here on what I want to show but it's not cooperating really. Um, I have these two bubbles right here vertical that are just sitting on the wall but my my camera wants to focus on the back wall here so let's see what happens to those bubbles as the liquid passes by them and I expect that they will not collect to the oily phase I'm starting to flow of the liquid and there's still some more distillate dripping into my flask here so here comes the oil phase and it just passes by those bubbles those droplets and well, this time, <laughs> the first one disappeared. Let's see if the second disappears also. Yeah, it did. So actually, this one combined. Not, a, not the best example, but I did see some other ones that wouldn't uh, combine into the oil. Of course, now that I'm trying to film this, that's not happening. Let's see how this big bubble here does, whether it will also merge or, or just stay separated. All right, didn't work this time. As I'm disassembling my distillation apparatus, I'm comparing the two batches of my distillation. This is the first batch, and as you can clearly see, it has a yellowish color. This is the new batch, and it's also clear to see that it's transparent, pure white. So I'm wondering whether the difference in color is because the first batch was burnt a little bit um, and so whatever that burnt chemical was also uh, is incorporated in this batch or whether it oxidized after sitting overnight. So now I'm, I have a dilemma of whether I should combine the two batches into one or keep them separate. They're rather small quantities. I'd say maybe 10, 15 milliliters each. So I don't know if I want to keep them separate, but then again, I don't want to contaminate my, my pure second batch with the first one. If, if, if it was contaminated by the burning, if it just uh, oxidized, then the second batch will turn yellow also. So maybe I'll just wait a day and see if it turns yellow and then decide. 